الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على حبيبك المصطفى محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful I bear witness that there is no deity but Allah سبحانه وتعالى And I bear witness that our Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is his servant, his mercy to the world and his messenger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Luqman, Surah number 31, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir rahim, inna Allah indahu ilmu s-sa'a, wa yunazzilu al-ghayth, wa ya'lamu ma fi al-arham, wa ma tadri nafsum maza taksibu ghada, wa ma tadri nafsum bi ayy ardin tamut, إن الله عليم خبير. Verily, the knowledge of the hour is with Allah سبحانه وتعالى alone. It is He who sends down rain. It is He who knows what is in the wombs. Nor does anyone know what it is that he or she will earn tomorrow. Nor does anyone know in what land he or she will die. Verily, with Allah is full knowledge, he is all acquainted. Sadaqallahu al-Azim. There's those five mysteries of human beings that are registered in this ayah, in this surah. The mystery of time and knowledge, ilm al-ghayb the knowledge of the unknown. It is only with him almighty. We are supposed to know things in ordinary life, but the ultimate cause and knowledge of things are with Allah alone. The creator. The answer to when, how, and where is with him almighty. The questions of our life, our well-being, and the future is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our life from day to day, or our death, it's a great mystery that full knowledge is with Him Almighty. The final abode, the time of death, are certain. But the question when and where. Our physical life from day to day, our death, to earn our livelihood and to reap the consequences of our actions, whether it's good or ill, it's our conduct. We are responsible for it. And that's why we are accountable for our deeds. The rest is with Him Almighty, the full of knowledge. No man, woman, knows what the, what, what the morrow may bring forth. Few days back, I had the chance to watch a video of a person, his name is Rick, explaining the time when he survived the, the crash, crash landing of the plane nine years ago if you remember, on the Hudson River in New York. Few days back, he gave his insight on that incident. And when I heard it, it triggered the question for me. And I wanted to share it with you. As I understood from his talk, he's talking about his experience as from the human side. But I wanted to share and add to it 
the spirituality of our experience, our relationship with God Almighty. He said that, imagine a plane full of smoke, according to him. Imagine an engine failing, noises, sounds scary. I looked at the flight attendant and I saw disturbance, fear in her eyes. And I said, what's happening? And she said, probably there's some birds that hit the plane, no worry. Don't worry about it. The pilot has already turned the plane back. And he said that we are in different route. We're alongside the Hudson River. And he said, three things happened at the same time. It's like a few seconds, but it felt like eternity. I'm paraphrasing his words. He said, number one, a pilot, a pilot lined up the plane with the Hudson River. Number two, he turns off the engine. Now I got scared more. Imagine being on a plane with no engine sound. How does it feel? Number three, then three words came from the speaker. Emotionless, brace for impact. All I felt is terror, fear, fear of death, and sadness. My life is over. I thought that my life passed by me before my eyes in seconds. And he said, I learned three things from this experience about my life that day. Number one, it all changes in an instant. We have this so-called bucket list that we talk about socially. Everybody has a bucket list before they die. They want it to do. And my bucket list is not checked yet. I still have a lot of things to do. I'm too young. Things we want to do in life is incomplete, incomplete. All the people wanted to reach out to that I didn't. All the fences that I wanted to mend. All the experiences I wanted to have and never did. That's his thoughts at the time. I no longer want to postpone anything in life. And I pray to God that if I escape, if I'm back to life, if God has given me a new lease on life, what would I do? So he discussed it from a social aspect. That urgency, that purpose, has really changed my life, he said. Number two, the second thing I learned, that I really felt real regret. I lived a good life in my own humanity and mistakes, and I tried to get better at everything. But in my humanity, he said, I also allowed my ego to get in between me and my wife, me and my partners. So the time I wasted on things that did not matter with people that matters. We should look into it from two perspectives. Number one, the level of my relationship as a human being with my family, my wife, my kids, my relationship with my friends, co-workers, my relationship with my family. These are the three aspects that he felt that there is something wrong, something missing in his life. And he decided to eliminate the negative energy in his life. No fighting for silly things. No fighting over other things that matters not. And he said that I feel now I'm so happy that God has given me a new lease on life. 
The third thing I learned, he said, that as we are getting ready for impact, those seconds, I wanted to see my kids grow. I wanted to see my grandkids. I wanted to enjoy my life with my family. That I didn't have the chance to because of busy schedule or things that I selfishly wanted to do away from being with my kids and my family. And those seconds felt like eternity. And I prayed to God to go back and learn from my experience. And my wish is to be successful in marriage and in business, to have my kids and see my kids grow and have grandkids that I will enjoy. To be a great father and a great husband. These are the things that, dear brothers and sisters, we tend to forget in the heat of the day, in the business, the deadlines, and the things that we want to do. If we think deeply, nothing matters. It is all in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We think that we are in control, but his control supersedes ours. That doesn't mean we have to rely always and not to do the work. It is our job to do the work, to be successful, to thrive, to be successful, but at the same time, not to lose the big picture, which is the second level that I added to his speech, is our relationship with God. We as believers, everybody is a believer of God, regardless of their religion. When we believe in God and the day after and accountability, then our life becomes meaningful. That we are working for a cause. That in the day when we pass away, we will have an abode in Jannah, inshallah. And how to reach that? Hoping that we will live forever or we will live a longer life. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said hadith that most of us know, but we sometimes go fast and do not really think and ponder upon it. An Ibn Abbas in Radiallahu Anhuma Qal Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Igtanim Khamsan Qabla Khams Shababaka Qabla Haramik Sihataka Qabla Sakamik Rinaka Qabla Fakarik فراغك قبل شغلك وحياتك قبل موتك رواه البخاري that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said you have to prepare and gain for five things before the other five comes your youth before your age before you get older your health before you get ill or sick your riches before poverty your free time before you get busy. Your life before death. Meaning that to gain the satisfaction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the same time to gain, to help other people, to help those who are in need, to be a human being. Not to fight, not to bicker, not to complain. In Surah Al-Munafiqoon, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتُ فَيَقُولَ رَبِّ لَوْ لَا أَخَّرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ فَأَصَّدَّكَ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ وَلَنْ يُؤَخِّرَ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهَا وَاللَّهُ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ that Spend from your wealth that we have provided to you before death comes suddenly. Then he will say, a man or a woman, Oh my Lord, give me another chance on life, a little while. I should then give largely in charity and I should be 
among those who are salihin or righteous and do good. It is a word that is spoken, expiration date. There is no coming back. So we have to gain the time where we are still breathing. We don't know when our last breath will be. We ask ourselves the question, are we ready? Aslaha in Arabic means to mend, to repair, to become righteous, to repair your relationship with your fellow human beings, and to repair your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah says, حتى إذا جاء أحدهم الموت قال رب ارجعون لعلي أعمل صالحا فيما تركت كلا إنها كلمة هو قائلها When death comes to one of them, he says, O oh my Lord, send me back to life in order that I may work goodness in the things that I neglected. Nay, but it is a word he is saying, just a word with no meaning. This is what we are afraid of, dear brothers and sisters. That nobody is always finished with his or her plans before death. We plan for five, six years, 10 years ahead of time. We plan our retirement. We have a bucket list. And we should know better that death comes suddenly. There is a saying, live for the day after as though you are to die tomorrow. And learn and live for the, your life as though you are living forever. It's a powerful message. So there are five things we, I recommend for myself and for all of us. Number one, I call them the five principles. Free your heart of, from hatred. Free your mind from worries. Because if we worry or not, things are going to happen. We only lose the pleasure of the moment to enjoy our life with worries. Someone says, worry is like a flat tire. It gets you nowhere. This is our life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his plans for every one of us. All we have to do is pray and do our job and Allah will take care of the rest. Number three, live simply. Don't be extravagant. Don't spend too much on things that don't matter. It's easy to say, but it's not easy to apply in our life because people always look up to other people who have a lot of money and says, why not me? I want to do this, I want to buy this, I want to buy that, I want to buy another home. And things happen. It says like, you only use 70% of the possessions that you have. 70% of your home you use. 70% of your wealth, or your car, or your business. You don't, we don't use everything. And all of a sudden things happen, and then we will be I hope and I pray to Allah that we won't be among those who ask for another chance because we are not going to get it. We have to work hard this life. Number four is to give more in charity. And number five is to expect less from people, not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه. الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما
اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد Dear brothers and sisters I'm going to make it longer a little bit because I have few time, few minutes I have commandments I prepared for myself first and for you. Just if you remember some of them, that's fine. Number one, don't put off telling someone you love them. Number two, never allow fear to stop you from doing the things of which you dreamed of, given these things are lawful, pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not fail to ask someone for forgiveness. And above that, ask God for forgiveness. Find the time to tell someone that you forgive them. In Surah An-Nur, Allah says, وَلْيَعْفُوا وَلْيَصْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Forgive and forget. Don't you love that Allah will forgive you in the day of judgment? Make time to bring happiness to a child. A homeless, a needy person. Never be too busy to visit and comfort the sick or a friend in the time of need. Don't feel empty hearted. Say the words for justice. Stand for justice when you see injustice. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make room for the love of Allah and the Prophet in our hearts. Ask forgiveness. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins. Allahumma aghfir lana wa arhamna. Allahumma aafina wa aafu anna. Allahumma tub alayna innaka anta attawabu rahim Allahumma inna na'udhu bi ridaka min sakhatik wa bi mu'afatika min mu'qubatik wa bi kaminka la nuhsi thanaan alayka anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. Wallah, we ask you to forgive our sins. Wallah, we ask you to, ho to heal those who are sick O oh Allah, we ask you to have mercy on those who passed away before us, Ya Arhamar Rahimin. Wa salli Allahumma wa sallim wa barik ala habibika al-Mustafa Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa aqimi salah.